God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you today through God our Father and through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It's always a good idea to take stock of our lives from time to time, to pull away from our busyness, from all of the things that we're doing, and ask those questions of why and how and what is happening and what is God doing in our life, in this common life that he has called us to together. Our nation at large is preparing to do that this week in this season of thanksgiving, this time of examining general reasons for thankfulness, but that thankfulness sometimes doesn't get attributed necessarily to the one to whom thanks is deserved. It's just this, I'm thankful for, but why and to whom? My goal today is that the object of our gratitude stays squarely focused on the one to whom all thanks and praise is due, our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, I want to take a little bit closer look at verses 5 through 10 in our text today in Deuteronomy chapter 26. And what I want you to notice is that there is a call for a response before God. A response always requires that there was some kind of activity or action or communication that had already happened before, because otherwise, what are we responding to? And so there's something that went before that response, and Moses lays it out for us what that is. The people of Israel are responding to God's goodness to them over the past 600 years since calling Abraham to be the father of many nations, including theirs. And that growing family that grew into the nation of Israel eventually was subjected to slavery in Egypt, and then God delivered them out of that slavery by his miraculous hand and has brought them to the place that they are now. And now they're being prepared for how they are to respond when something that hasn't happened yet happens. And that is when they enter the promised land. Because you see, they have for almost 40 years now been out of Egypt, but they have still been wandering in the wilderness, being supplied by God's miraculous hand, manna and quail and water And now God is preparing them to enter that land that he had promised so long ago. The one that God, speaking through the burning bush, told Moses was the land flowing with milk and honey. They are to give an offering as they enter into that land that God has given them. The first fruits of their labor to the Lord. But you may notice something else if you read that text in Deuteronomy chapter 26. And that is that there is a rhythm built into it, a structure that is very familiar to something that we do week in and week out as we gather to worship. Now, we do have some flexibility in our service in terms of how and where things get arranged in the liturgy. But one of the ways that you'll often see it set up is that the creed follows all the Word of God stuff. And we already said the creed. Sometimes the creed in some services will follow the sermon. And the idea is that as a response to everything that God has just told us, when his word was read, when it was preached, now we have this response of thanks to something that God already did. Just like the people in Israel were giving thanks to God for something that he already did over the past 600 years and bringing them to the point that they are right now. And so there's this response that occurs to what has been heard, that rhythm. And so what does that look like in our lives? Well, that response first goes to God our Father, maker of heaven and earth. This is the same God who called Abraham so that he could create not only a new nation, but new nations from the offspring. And the Father planned the sending of his Son through that bloodline in order to redeem the world. And more than that, 
That same God the Father supplies everything that we need to support our bodies and life. And as much as we may think that it is our own work or our own gumption or our own intelligence that allows us to have the things that we have or do the things that we do, who is it that enables any of that to occur? It's only through God, our Heavenly Father, who gives us these things. And then comes the Son. We recount that he is, in fact, God's Son, begotten, not made, but conceived through the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. That is to say that he is, at the same time, fully man and fully God, 100% both always. And he came to redo everything that the people of Israel didn't do right the first time around and everything that you and I don't do right so he can make all of God's people, Old and New Testament, into one single people, one church. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and then he went and preached the beginning of his victory message in hell before being resurrected in a new body ascended into heaven. And all of this, God has already done for you and for me. And we respond as those thanking God for the sacrifice that he has made. And once again, all before we have done anything whatsoever. That's good news for you and me. What's more, now Jesus continues to rule over God's kingdom, heaven and earth. He is actively working for us in our behalf, helping us so that we can have confidence in our God on our best days and on our worst days, that he is a faithful shepherd and king for his people. He breaks into our lives day after day, week after week, speaking very needed and necessary, direct words of forgiveness that we need to hear for our comfort and our assurance and our peace. He comes to you directly in real time through his true body and his true blood to communicate his love for you into your hands and into your lips. This is a God who is living and active and working and doing things for his people, not just what he did, in his crucifixion and resurrection, but he keeps doing today. We respond as those whom God is continuing to serve and he's living and active and doing his God stuff now. And then, of course, comes the Holy Spirit who gathers to form us together as God's people. He makes us holy. He works through the word. He works through the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper and the forgiveness that is spoken out to the people of God to bring us eternal life. And now we have the promise to be made resurrected like Jesus has been resurrected, sure and certain. We respond as those made holy for today, even as we live in hope for something that has not yet happened in full for us. Because we know that God's promises do not return void. And he will do exactly what he says he will do. Just like he did for the people of Israel. Which brings us to, of all things, the offering. You know, I once had somebody remarked to me that they thought that the reason we had the offering where it was in the sermon was because they were like paying the pastor for the message. And if it was a, an especially good message that day, maybe you're supposed to give more, I don't know, right? Whatever that means and however you gauge that. Well, no. The offering is part and parcel to this response, this confession that we make of who our God is and what he has done for us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that rhythm, you'll see, is already baked in here in Deuteronomy chapter 26. You see it? We give of what God first gave us, that's already his to begin with. We give in response 
to a gracious and loving God who has given us immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. We give in response to a God who has called us together and made us into a people. We give in response to a God who has sacrificed for us. We give in response to a God who is continuing to be active among us and help us through his word and sacrament. And we give in response to a people living in resurrection hope through the power of the Holy Spirit doing things in our lives today for hope for tomorrow. Said another way, our offerings of thanks are simply a joyful response to everything that God has done without his having required anything whatsoever of us because he gives us of his riches out of his love in Jesus Christ. It's an action of response that goes with the words of response in our creed, recounting who our God is and what he has done. And for that, it is right and fitting to thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may that peace which surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in faith. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen.